Well, hello. In this tutorial, we're going to be mixing three color palettes in Illustrator. And let's take a look at our options here, what we're going to use. We're going to uh, definitely do a triad and then a tetrad. And then our third palette will be your choice of monochrome, analogous complement, or split complement. The term triad means three, but it's not just any three color. It's actually a group of three used equidistant on the color wheel in color theory terms. So let's take a look at what might be a good uh, triad palette. An obvious choice would be the primary colors in the traditional color wheel of red, blue, and yellow, or say the secondary colors in the additive color wheel of cyan, magenta, and yellow, or the intermediary colors of yellow, green, cyan, blue, and red, magenta. Notice that there are one, two, three colors between those uh, choices in all of the selections on any of the color wheels that are 12 step color wheels. Okay, so now we have a 12 uh, 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 triad in a 12 step color wheel. Tetrad would be, a good way to explain that would be two uh, sets of complements. For example, uh, red and green in the traditional color wheel are complementary colors, right? And another uh, two sets oops, would be straighter line here would be uh, blue violet and yellow orange so these two complementary pairs make a tetrad color strategy another tetrad color strategy would be uh, something like this where there is instead of two colors between them there's one color between them so they as long as they are two sets of colors that are directly across from each other or two sets of complements okay so that's what makes up a tetrad color strategy. Monochrome would be one color, any color that you choose. For example, if you chose yellow or orange, whatever the U is going to be, right, we're, we've got to make sure that the color is going to be, um, this, this number here is not going to move the U number. If the U number starts to change, then we're getting into a different color. So choose a color and stick with that color. You may modify the saturation and brightness, uh, either or making shades, making tints, or making tones, but the U should stay the same, okay? Otherwise, it won't be monochrome or a single color. Uh, analogous are colors that share properties. For example, we take a primary red and a uh, secondary magenta in the additive color wheel, and the red magenta between these hues share properties. Uh, for example, uh, yellow, green, and yellow would also share properties, or say in the traditional color wheel, yellow, green, and green. So colors that are next to each other, two or three hues that share properties, those are analogous colors. Complement, again, I talked about that, two colors that are directly across from each other uh, on a color wheel. So if we are selecting, say, um, orange, uh, then on the additive color wheel, then cyan blue would be its complement. If we're on the um, subtractive color wheel and we select yellow, then blue would be its opposite. But notice if we are using the traditional color wheel, yellow, uh, its complement would be violet. So it's very important to be using colors from one color wheel in order to produce the palette that you're working with. Okay, so that would be complement. Now, what is split complement? A split complement would be a color and the two colors on either side of it, uh, of its complement. Uh, I should say that again. A, a U and the two colors on either side of its complement. For example, red, its complement would be green, but its split complement would be blue-green and yellow-green. If we chose blue in the additive color wheel, its complement would be orange and yellow green in the additive color wheel. If we chose cyan, again, these are just three different examples, then the opposite would be, our, you know, the split complement would be uh, orange and red magenta, so the colors on either side of its, of its its complement. So that's what makes a split complement. Okay, so now that we have the definitions all clear, let's take a look at our color strategies here, our, our, our color um, our color template here, and I can use the color swatches. I'm going to use, let's take a look 
refer back to our color wheel just to make sure that we are choosing accurate colors. So for the first one is a triad. So I'm going to use the subtractive color wheel, uh, uh, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Okay, so that can go to my color swatches and let's uh, find the maximum saturated use. Uh, let's see, where are they? I want maximum saturation. Let me, there we go. Okay, so I can choose uh, cyan, and then for this square, I'm going to use magenta, and then for this one, I'm going to use yellow. And then I can decide how I want to do this. I can choose, for example, this one. I'm going to use two rows for cyan because Cyan can produce a, a, a real range of value. I know that cool colors recede and warm colors like magenta and yellow are advanced. So in order to produce depth in a design, I'm going to use one of these palettes for my next assignment. I want to make sure that I have a range of color and value contrast. So varied saturation and value contrast to produce a depth. Uh, depth in a design. So for this one, let's we can choose, um, let me go back to my color. Uh, uh, HSB mode. I can choose a tint or a, a, just a light tone of that color, right? Give me some a little bit more gray in the mix if I choose, if I'd like. And I'm going to delete these two squares. And I've already set my blend options to two steps, so I don't need to do that. I can just go blend make. And for my next uh, square, let's do um, let's do a shade of of the color here of cyan and there we go let's get a little bit darker there and then I'm going to go towards a much darker value for this one so let me go for a really nice um, deep shade uh, of magenta uh, or of cyan there okay so next thing I want to do is eliminate these two squares and blend object blend make and that's set now I have a nice range of uh, you know, color and contrast, varied saturation and value contrast. For ma uh, magenta, let's do just tints for the, no, let me do tones for this one. Just uh, create, um, you know, a little bit more of a rich quality in the color, a little bit dusty rose, for example. Okay, but I also want to make sure that I am uh, producing uh, some contrast, right? So let's make sure I have a lighter value, okay? And then I'm gonna and then oops, interesting things you can do by accident in Illustrator. We learn a lot by the mistakes. That's one of the things about art. Boy, do we learn a lot from our mistakes. Art, science, whatever. Uh, there we go. Object blend make. Now I have a range of subtle tones of magenta with this one at maximum saturation for my yellow. Let's just stick with tints. I like the nice bright uh, hue of yellow. It's a nice accent, warm light color. And let me eliminate these, remake those, reblend, blend make, and now I have my triad palette done. I'm going to go on to my second uh, set. Let's go back and reference our color wheels, and I can either stick with my additive color wheel or go with my traditional color wheel. Let's just try the traditional color wheel. I'm going to use violet for this one. Okay, and I have colors that are warm and colors that are cool. I know that's at 270, so I'm just going to do it that way. Okay, violet, I'm going to put my cool colors at the top. Let me double check. What is my other cool color? I'm going to use violet and, oops, violet and yellow, blue and orange. So let's put blue here. Okay, and I know that blue is at 240. I could use my swatches, but, you know, lots of ways to do it. Uh, that's the beauty of uh, this software. Actually, you know what? Instead of doing it that way, why don't I use blue on this end and I'm going to produce a blend. It's going to produce some transitions between, but I'm going to have a blend between these two colors. And then I can do the same thing here where I, uh, you know, produce a blend of, say, tints of or tones of the colors uh, just to give myself, a, you know, a greater range of of value and color to work with. Um, make, make some, um, let's make a shade of that color, or a tone of that color uh, for the first row. And for the second row, uh, let's make a maximum saturated color for that one. Okay, so now we're going to have um, a variety of hues. Okay, so do this one. Uh, let's actually eliminate these two. And object blend make. 
And for this one, let's, let's keep doing that. Didn't get them all. Very important to carefully select. So take my time. Delete. OK. Object. Blend make. And now I have a range of those used. And for my next colors, right, so uh, I'm using the traditional violet and yellow. Let's use yellow for this color. And I want to go back and use my swatch there, yellow. And for my next color, it's going to be uh, orange. So I can use my swatch for that one here. Orange. Uh, so let me make sure that's the right orange. Let's see. Let me double check that. No, that's red orange. I want that to be the proper orange at 30. And I want it to be maximum saturation. So sometimes choosing swatches won't uh, do exactly what you want. So, OK. Um, I think I'm going to, because warm colors advance and cool colors recede, this gives me a nice range of value and color contrast within the uh, violet and blue uh, tetrad use. So I think I'm going to, you know, I can use a tint or a tone or a shade here of, of yellow. So let me, let me just use a nice, uh, a nice creamy, buttery yellow. Oops, I want that uh, at the other end. Okay, let me do that here. Okay. And then do the same thing here. I'm going to eliminate those. I think that's actually a tone, but that's okay. Let's leave it like that. Object blend make. But, you know, I have to actually be very careful. Oops. Well, I, that's interesting. When that happens, that means I did not line things up the way I should have. Uh, didn't select them properly. Let's try that again. Oh, that would be interesting. Let's see what happens there. Object blend make and see <laughs> see that boy that produces some interesting uh, techniques there but that's not what we want to do so um, uh, let me just reselect my color here I, I'm going to stick with my buttery yellow my first idea you know it's easy to go off onto a sidetrack but just you know to discover some new things all right now object blend make there we go. And for orange, because that's also, uh, you know, a kind of a rich color, it can make some really nice, um, nice kind of rich brown kind of color. So I'm going to choose a shade for the end there. Oops. Delete these. Object blend make. All right, now I've got my Tetrad palette color ready. And uh, for your choice, you can choose either monochrome, a single color, a complementary color, a split complementary pair, or analogous. So well, the next thing I want to show you, though, is let's actually mark our color wheel. And I'm going to mark my color wheel with my first triad selection, right? OK. And now what I want to do is uh, take my white selection tool and, oops, I actually want to select the entire field. And I can drag and drop this into this palette and go to object. Uh, oops, sorry, that if you can't see that, transform is the first one under object, transform. And I'm going to go to scale. And what I want to do is modify that down. I want to reduce the size of that. So let's try 30%. See how that looks. 30% looks good. We're going to place our triad palette right there. And now I have triad. And I would do the same thing. Choose my, uh, my, oops. Choose my uh, traditional color wheel after marking the use that I selected, which would or violet and yellow, blue and orange, mark those. Do the same process to drag and drop that into this. Uh, go to Object, Transform, Scale, reduce it down, and do the same thing for whatever I choose for the third palette. And then in the bottom, I would uh, add a text box and type some words that go along with what I believe these uh, colors suggest to me. Some descriptive words, emotive words describing each palette that I produce. And then I would save it for web and devices as a JPEG. And I have completed uh, week four assignment two.